What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play New Super Mario Bros. Wii. In the last video we finished off World 6 and now here we are in World 7. One could say, we have our heads in the clouds. Although I'm not sure why you would say that because that was a really bad joke and it wasn't even funny. But uh, yeah, welcome to World 7. It's pretty cool in my opinion. It might actually be one of the best worlds in the game. At least, from my perspective. I can really only think of like one level that I don't like in this world, and I think the only reason I don't like it is because the star coins can be a pain to collect. Otherwise though, it is a pretty cool level with an interesting twist to it, so I kind of am looking forward to playing through it, but at the same time, I'm not looking forward to getting those star coins. Um, other than that though, I guess the entire world is pretty okay. The only thing I guess I really don't like is that, um, there's not a whole lot of variety in terms of scenery or level design. Like, most of the levels will have colorful pipes, blocks, or mushroom platforms to run across, and they all have, like, this generic cloud background, so don't get me wrong, it's not terrible, but they all sort of blend together a little bit. Anyways, I think we can find our second star coin down here. More importantly though, inside that question mark block is a propeller suit. And since we are high up in the sky, yeah, as you can imagine, the propeller suit is like one of the best power-ups you can have throughout this entire world since a fall here will pretty much always guarantee your death since there's not a whole lot of like platforms to catch you in your fall. There's no ground plane either, so yeah, be a little bit careful going through here, and having that propeller cap can be like extra insurance since it can save you from a death, or just like slow your fall, and hopefully you can find somewhere safe to land. Alright, so that is the third and final star coin. You actually can get that one without use of the propeller, so you can just jump off that purple platform, but uh, regardless, we're basically done with this world, so let's just finish it up and get ourselves another 1-Up. I'm actually kind of surprised, like, we only have 68 1-Ups. I thought for sure we would have, like, way more by now, but, um, I guess that seems about right, considering I think this game only has 77 total levels, I want to say. And, um, haven't exactly been getting the 1-Ups from every single level, so... There's a pretty large, like, margin for error, I guess you could say. Although, that's not to, like, take into account the 1-Ups that I've been getting from coins, because I'm sure I've gotten quite a few just from collecting 100 coins over and over and over again. Um, I have not been using any of the 1-Up houses either, but I kind of do want to get to, like, 99 1-Ups if I can before the end of the game. I'm not sure if that's going to be possible, because even if I did get you know, every single one-up from every single flagpole, um, I'd probably only be around 80 or so one-ups by the time the game ends, so, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of room there. Anyways, for this star coin, we just gotta bait the, uh, chain chomp to the right, then if we bash down his, uh, little peg there, he'll go rampaging off and break those bricks for us. Kind of a shame that I lost my propeller suit, but... Again, it was for the greater good, so not a whole lot I can really do there. Um, these chain shops can be kind of annoying, so... Yeah, just, uh, watch out for them, I guess, while you're going through here. I'm gonna try and play it safe now, just because I've got no power-ups left to work with, which... Kinda stinks, cause... That would really come in handy for, uh, you know, skipping some segments coming up, especially that propeller suit. But I guess now we can just, like, swim through <laughs> the weird... Floating water bubbles. Not sure that's how precipitation works, but, you know, whatever. It actually does remind me of, like, a movie. I can't remember the title, though, and it's really bothering me right now. But, um, there's definitely been a couple of movies that have had, like, floating water bubbles as, like, part of a scene. I just can't remember any of the titles right now. Anyways, yeah, you want to come down here because that's where you can find the second star coin. Just, uh... Be a little bit careful when you're going from water bubble to water bubble. Just, uh, make sure you will, like, enough room to jump to the next one before you make your jump. Anyways, I think... Yeah, there we go. There's a propeller cap over here, and oh my gosh. No, are you kidding me? I cannot believe I just missed that power-up. I'm actually so mad at myself right now. 
You have no idea. Like, god dang it, dude. That would have made the rest of this level so easy. Ah, all right, fine, whatever. Yeah, the final star coin off to the left when you come out of that pipe. So just make sure you double back real quick. Grab that, and now we're pretty much good to go to the end of this level. I could have skipped like this entire segment if I just had my propeller suit. Why? The game, it's trolling me, dude. I don't appreciate it. I suppose it doesn't really matter since, uh, yeah, we are done with the level anyway, so that sort of all works out, I guess. And I guarantee you we'll be able to find a propeller cap like within the next level or two. This world does seem like kind of small at first, but I promise you it's really not because, um, both the castle and the ghost house have a secret exit. And those secret exits, well, the one from the ghost house, I believe, takes you to... I want to say it's a cannon, but I also don't think it's a cannon. I'm not sure where that goes, actually. But, um, I know the secret exit from the castle at least takes you to a different path that does contain more levels, so don't you worry about it. Alright, now, we're not going to be stupid here, and I'm going to try and keep this propeller suit as long as I can, especially since I know for a fact it will be useful in uh, getting some of those star coins. And that was a little bit risky there. I don't know why I went for the ground pound. Probably should have just like fell normally, but whatever, we're good. So yeah, the gimmick for this level, obviously, fuzzies. I hate fuzzies. I mean, they look cute and adorable, don't get me wrong, but it's just, Paper Mario sort of made me hate fuzzies because anyone who's played Paper Mario probably hates that enemy the most. They are so annoying to fight. You guys remember that time I LP'd Paper Mario, right? I remember. Man, it feels like so long ago, actually, even though I don't think it was. I'm talking about, like, Thousand Year Door. I know it's been, like, a really, really long time since I played the first game. That was back, like, right when I first got my braces put on that I, uh, I did the first game. I remember, like, I needed to take, like, three weeks off because, um... Like, I could not talk without just, like, tearing up the inside of my mouth just because I was still getting used to having braces. That was, like, the worst time ever, man. I remember that. Holy crap. Yeah, braces were not fun. I'm really glad that I do not have to deal with them anymore. Like, I think I only had them on for a total of eight months because, like, my teeth weren't that messed up. I just wanted to, like, get them straightened out. So I did that. But, um... My gosh, yeah, those eight months were not fun, dude. I feel bad for, like, anyone who has to have braces on for... How did that even hit me, man? Alright, whatever, game. But yeah, I do feel bad for, like, anyone who has to have braces on for, like, years at a time. Like, uh, I it just... It's gotta be the worst, man. I sympathize with you. I really do. Um, alright, mushroom. Well, I was kind of hoping for, like, a fire flower or something, but I guess the mushroom will work, too. I don't really need it, though. Um, we're, like, at the end of this level. I can't really tell if we are or not. I think we are. So, yeah, there is the flagpole. All right, we're good to go, baby. I just wanted to, like, play it safe there, you know, and not accidentally do anything stupid right at the end. I mean, it was bad enough that I lost my freaking propeller suit, but, you know, whatever. Wow, we're already at the mid-castle. Like I said, this world seems like it goes fast, but, um... It doesn't, so don't you worry. Anyways, let's head inside and take on our boy Ludwig. I'm ready, dude. You ain't no musical composer. Let's go. Alright, um... Ooh, this is pretty nifty. So, uh, yeah, I can move this platform back and forth by tilting my remote. Hmm, that's pretty neato. Um... I think there is... One star coin outside of the castle during this segment, and then the other ones are inside. But if I'm not mistaken, um, we actually need to use this thing to sort of reach a secondary entrance to the inside of the castle. That way we can actually get these second star coins. So I'm going to try and do that. And oh my gosh, there are so many bullets everywhere, dude. It's scary. I'm scared right now. Alright, um, ah, man, come on, dude, I thought for sure I was going to be fine there. Alright, whatever. Let's just try and not get hit again. This is like a bullet hell. Actually, that's not even true. I've played a couple of bullet hells. 
They are way worse than this, man. I'm not good at uh, shoot 'em up games at all. I like them. I'm just terrible at them. Um, I think the first dark coin is around these giant bullet bills, so just stay over to the right side of the screen as I go to the left side, and you should be able to find it. There it is. I just wanted to make sure that bullet did not hit me, although, all right, I think we're probably good. Now let's make our way over to the left because I'm pretty sure that's where I can find, like, this sort of secret entrance, if you will. Yeah, we can just hop up here. And this should take us right inside the castle, but also dump us out right next to the second star coin. Alright, um, you know what, I guess I can leave the second checkpoint there since I probably don't need it anyways. Like, this will just take us directly up to where the boss door is, and really all I'm worried about is, um, getting the next star coin. So like I said before, there is a secret exit in this level, it's off to the right side over here, like near one of those, um, brown platforms that is jetting out from the wall. If you sort of walk into the wall near one of them, I think it's actually this one coming up, um, on the right side here. Yeah, if you walk into the wall there, it will take you to a secret egg. So I'm not gonna do that right now because I just want to finish up this level normally, and I do need a bob bomb for that because, yeah, I actually need to use this bob bomb to break those bricks, that way I can get that freaking star coin, so hopefully that works. How did that not blow up the bricks? It was like right next to him, man. Alright, um, yeah, a little trick you can do is by going all the way to the left, you can hold down on this platform, and, um, that will cause, like, the platform to lower because it's not supposed to kill you, so it'll always just lower back down and let you sort of get that star coin. We lost, like, our power-up by doing that, but, hey, you know, at least we got the freaking star coin, so I'll take it. I can probably do this boss fight no problem, plus, I think there might be a hidden power-up over here. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I feel a little bit better about that now. I mean, it was definitely worth getting the star coin for, it's just that now, I only got, like one hit before I'm really in danger during this fight. Thankfully, Ludwig, really not that scary. He's, uh, kind of one of the easier Koopalings. Bro, there you go. Thank goodness. I was like, slam down on the ground already. Oh, no. That's not good, man. Um, alright, you know what? Let me see if I can actually sort of... I was gonna say maybe, like, just three cycle or one cycle this guy, but yeah, I wasn't quick enough there, so... We're gonna have to do this the intended way, I think, but we should be fine. Oh, that was so close. I'm really glad <laughs> that I managed to pull that off, because I thought for a second there, that magic blast that he was charging up was going to hit me. But thankfully, we made it through as little baby Mario. Alright. Done with the mid-castle already. I mean, we still gotta go back in there and do the secret exit, but, um... That was pretty quick, man. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Alright, so, yeah, there's also a secret exit in that ghost house, so we are gonna be spending some time on, like, these two levels. And Toad, no one cares, man. I'm not going back to help you. Alright, um, now that we've saved, let's just jump right back in here. Let me use a power-up real quick, and, uh, we'll go and grab that secret exit. Alright, so as I was saying, yeah, just, um... Stay to the right side for the most part, trying to avoid these bob bombs if you can. You'll notice a Mario-sized gap uh, between like one of the brown platforms and the wall coming up very shortly. In fact, I think it's right over here. Yeah, so that's where we need to go. Oh man, right at the last second. But yeah, right in here is our secret exit. So just um, run as fast as you can here because there are two bullet bill shooters, but the flagpole is like right in the open. So. That's really all there is to it. And I believe this secret exit will take us to 7-6, I want to say. And if we beat that, it actually takes us to the castle in a different entrance, which is fairly interesting because I believe that entrance takes you directly to the boss of that castle, which is kind of cool. We're not going to make use of that, though. So instead, we're going to head down and uh, make our way to the ghost house. 7-6 is technically the last level before the castle in this world, so we will be doing that one, well, last, just because that makes sense. 
Anyways, here in the ghost house in World 7, we have some new enemies. These, um, punching boxing guys. So, using these, we can actually break open the, uh, stone gray square blocks. And that's sort of a thing you will be doing to not only get one of the star coins in this level, but, um, you can also get to the secret exit in this level the same exact way. Now, the secret exit's right over here. We're actually not going to be going through there just yet. We'll go through the normal exit first, but we will come back for the secret exit. In fact, I think the final star coin for this level can only be collected in that secret exit. So no matter what, you basically have to go through this level twice in order to collect all the star coins. And by the way, the reason why you want to collect all the star coins is to um access the secret world 9. I had someone sort of ask me if I was planning on doing a video on World 9, and yeah, of course I am. Like, that's why I'm going through all the effort of collecting the star coins, because there is basically no reason to collect them unless you want to go to World 9. And seeing as this is a 100% playthrough, not only will I be showing off all the normal and secret exits, I, of course, would like to show off World 9 as well. Anyways, let's uh, sneak down and grab that. That was kind of close, but thankfully... The uh, hitbox for the giant boos are a little bit weird, pretty lenient, and we were able to grab that new problem, and... Oh no, the crows! I forgot these were here. Crows are probably some of my least favorite enemies, both in this game, and especially in New Super Mario Bros. DS, because there's like an entire level dedicated to crows in World 8 of New Super Mario Bros. DS, and I just remember that being like... The most annoying thing in the world in that game. Like, I remember when that game first came out and I got to World 8, and that level just frustrated the heck out of me, man. I was so annoyed, but when I finally beat it, I was really happy. I don't even think, like, I got all the star coins um, when I, like, beat that level originally back in the day when that game came out. When did that game come out? Like, I want to say it was... 2004, but I feel like that might be too early. I'm really bad with dates. Like, I got the date for Mario 64's release date wrong when I made that video. It was 96 when that came out, apparently, but, you know, I'm not an encyclopedia, so you can't expect me to know every single date off the top of my head. Alright, so yeah, like I said, the secret exit right over here. Just, uh, trick this weird boxer guy into breaking those bricks for you, and yep, there is a hidden door we can go right through and be on our way. So, the secret exit for this level, again, I wanted to make sure I showed the entire thing off because it is sort of like its own level to some extent. Like, it's very, um, just long, I guess, to get to, like, the end. It doesn't just take you there like it does in a lot of other levels. There's still plenty of stuff to go through, so we need to be quick just because these platforms will disappear. But once you make it up here, you're pretty much in the clear. You gotta lead this boo. Um, yeah, around here should actually work. Basically, we just need to be able to jump over the boo and um, make our way to that door so we can continue moving on through here. Now, this level likes to trick you because, yeah, it puts you, like, where the exit is, but you actually want to go backwards a little bit, go through this door again, and there is the final star coin. Yeah, it's really weird that it does that, but, um... I guess it makes sense considering this is a ghost house. It's supposed to be weird. But, um, now that we got that coin, we're good to go. Let's just head through this door again. And, uh, no tricks this time. It does just, like, take you directly to where the exit is. So, we're done, man. We're done. I actually am kind of interested in seeing where this secret takes us because I kind of forgot. Like, I don't think... There is a cannon in this world, so... Oh. It literally just skips a level. That seems kind of pointless, honestly. Um... Not the greatest shortcut in the world. You only skip one level, but... I guess it's helpful for some people. Probably won't really make use of that, though, but whatever. Um... Ah, oh, great. Okay, so... Let's just try and not get hit by any spinies. That'd be great. Never mind. Well, let's just try and not get hit by any more spinies. Jeez. I really would have liked to keep that fire flower, but 
Oh well, I'm terrible at Mario, guys. Like, what else is new? You've watched the entire LP up to World 7 at this point. You should know, not that great at Mario. Alright, 7-4, let's do it. The Pipe World. I don't remember if I like this level or not. I'm pretty sure I do. I like a majority of the levels in, uh, World 7. And actually, you know what? This level, not too bad. Got a pretty cool concept, you know? We can control those platforms by, uh, tilting our remote to the left or the right. Overall, pretty cool concept. I don't think it's used that much at this level. Like, it's only used in maybe one or two spots. Um, the rest of it's just, like, straight up platforming over these moving pipes, which, again, not too bad. We should be fine. We just gotta remember where all the star coins are. I think there is one hard-to-reach star coin, so... Yeah, that should be kind of fun. Um... I'm gonna try and time this so I can jump off of the bull bill. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. And now we can just move on to the next section of the level. And this, yeah, is where we get to use, like, that whole moving platform mechanic. And you know what's kind of weird? Like, I seemingly remember this game having a lot more, like, wobble control segments, if you will. Um, obviously, I know you use the, the shake controls to do... The, um, propeller suit, the twirl jump, and, you know, some other things here or there in the game. But, um, I thought they used it a lot more in sections like this where you were controlling platforms by tilting the Wii Remote. But, I guess I was wrong because really there's only been, like, a handful of levels that have done anything like that. Um, there's that, like, very small area in World 1 where you control, like, one platform. Then there was that part in the castle, um, that raft level where you control the light, and now these platforms, and that's really been about it, but like, I swear, there were more levels that made you do stuff like that in this game, and holy crap, these Koopas, man, their hitboxes keep, like, screwing me up, what am I doing, man? I really gotta be careful now, cause, uh, there's a section coming up that's a little sketchy, not gonna lie, alright, I'm glad I got this mushroom, because I'm probably gonna need it. Since the final star coin is probably the only hard one to get in this level. Um, especially if you're not very good at bullet jumping, let me just say that. Uh, and I'm not exactly the greatest at bullet jumping, at least in this game. Like, it's weird too because, I mean, each Mario game obviously has their own sort of physics engine. And in Mario World, I'm like really good at jumping on bullets. In this game... I'm okay at jumping on bullets, but when you put like a bunch of bullets in a row that you need to jump off of, I will pretty much always get hit by at least one of the bullets. Anyways, um, what you want to do here is bullet jump into that green pipe. You can also use like a propeller cap if you happen to have it. Um, and a propeller cap would make this section a whole lot easier because what you need to do here is, um, jump up these bullets to try and safely make your way to that star coin and see- Ah, oh, man, I almost did it, dude. I almost did it. It's really hard because, like, I feel as if the hitboxes for bullet jumping in this game are a little bit too precise. Like, if you even touch the tip of that bullet bill in the wrong spot, you're getting hit, which is kind of annoying, but, oh, well, what are you gonna do? And, hey, we actually got the one-up, too. Nice. I'll take it, man. I'll take it. Look at little baby Mario. I'm just glad that we managed to get through that level and get all the star coins, because like I said, that last one, pretty annoying, not gonna lie. Alright, um, let's actually use a power-up before we go into this next level, just because I really don't want to go into any level as Baby Mario. It's always a bad idea. We should hopefully find a Tier 3 power-up fairly early on, in fact. There's probably one right in here, yes there is. Ah, um, Mario, you're so predictable, but you know what? That's part of the reason why we love you. I mean, just the fact that you can pretty much pick up any Mario game and have a good time is a good thing. And I think, like, both Mario and Kirby do that really well. Like, at least the mainstream games. You can pretty much pick up any Mario or Kirby title and just guarantee that you'll have a good time because they're both... Like, consistently good. I mean, I understand uh, there's uh, the spin-off titles that aren't the greatest all the time. Like, for instance, Kirby's uh, Rainbow Ride. That was the, the Wii U one, right? Pretty sure it was. That game, not the greatest. I mean, it wasn't 
the worst game ever made, I would say, but I didn't like it. I'm sure there's people out there who do adore that game, but, um, yeah, that's a game that I would say, probably not the greatest, but, like, the 3DS Kirby games, like, uh, Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot, some of the best Kirby games I've ever played. Like, I love those games. Even Return to Dreamland on the Wii, fantastic Kirby game. And then you got, like, the new Super Mario Bros. series, which, I mean, say what you will about their lack of originality and sort of overuse of the same world themes, at the end of the day, there's still solid platforming titles. Like, you can't even deny that. So, even though I certainly have some gripes with the games, um, they're still fun. I've still played them all, so... I mean, that should be a testament to, I guess, how well-designed the games are. Anyways, there's our third and final star coin, so... Um, let's watch out for that pair of Goomba, and... I think we're pretty much at the end of this level, so... Yes, yeah, screw it, let's just go, baby, I am done! Nice, easy level. Um... So I guess now we have to make our way over to 7-6, huh? Oh, man, it just so happens that, um... 7-6 is the level, the one level in World 7 that I don't really like, only because getting the star coins is kind of annoying, so let's do this. And there's also another reason why I don't like 7-6. It's an auto-scroller, so yeah. Here's the gimmick, though. Um, we have a bunch of these para beetles or whatever they're called, and basically, if we land on the smaller ones, they go up. The larger ones, they fly down. So, all the star coins are basically suspended in midair. We need to jump on the correct um, beetle here in order to reach the star coins, which can be a little bit tricky since we're going to be doing this not over solid ground, but over an open pit. Like, one missed jump here and you're dead. There's there's no way around that. Like, you are just dead if you miss a jump. Unless, of course, you do have a propeller suit, but we don't, and I'm pretty sure there is not a propeller suit in this level, so... Yeah, we're just going to have to be a little bit careful here. The fact that, like, the screen just scrolls on its own doesn't really help either, since it forces you to be... Uh, I guess quick about it, and you just have to constantly jump from beetle to beetle to beetle. What is kind of weird is like after you jump on a certain number of beetles, um, the game just like gives you a one-up that falls from the sky. So, I mean, I guess you can farm some lives easily in this level if you really want to, but um, I don't feel the need to do that. Ah, oh, there we go. That's close. Thank goodness we got that, man. We got two out of three. That's not bad. There's only one more left. The only problem is, um, the last one is probably the hardest star coin to get, since we have to make, like, one perfect jump all the way at the very end of this level, and if we miss that, um, we basically just lose. So, yeah, no pressure, right, guys? No pressure at all. Alright, um, so, to prepare yourself, the final star coin is all the way at the end of this line of really, really long beetles, or large beetles, rather. Wait until you get to the last one in the line, ride this one all the way down, and you'll be able to pick up the star coin. Now, that beetle over there, that's our ticket out of here. Oh my gosh. All right, you know what? I don't even care that we got hit because we're back on solid ground. We have all three star coins. Like, we essentially did it. All right, this level is done. That was not as bad as I thought it was going to be, so I am really, really happy that we are done with this level and pretty much like the rest of this world honestly now here's the thing um the exit from this level actually brings you into sort of an upper layer of this castle where i think it's like almost directly before the boss now i can't really make use of that because i want to get all the star coins and i'm pretty sure if we make use of that secondary entrance uh, we will end up skipping over at least one of the star coins, if not two of them. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have to go through this castle normally from the very beginning and uh, collect all the star coins along the way. But um, yeah, if you don't want to deal with all that jazz, you can use that secret exit or entrance rather. And um, I think it like puts you 
halfway through the level or something like that. At least, that's what I remember. I could be wrong about that, so... Oh my gosh, that was so stupid! Thank goodness I already activated the Fire Flower. Holy crud. Um, but yeah, someone feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that or not. So obviously, yeah, the gimmick of this level is that there are spiked pillars pretty much everywhere, man. It's not exactly the biggest threat in the world, but we do want to be a little bit careful. Our first star coin is right over here, so all we have to do is uh, break through these bricks, and we can kind of jump off this giant uh, dry bones here to get up if I could actually get the bounce to work correctly. Oh my gosh. Dude, it's right there! Come on, please! I actually might just be able to do it without the dry bones, but uh, there we go. That's what I was trying to do. And uh, it's just like... You know what? Let's just jump over you. There we go. That'll work. <laughs> Alright, um, let's be careful over here. We'll just jump down and hopefully not get penetrated by the spiky pillar because that would not be pleasant, let me tell you that much. I'm just going to play it safe, play it slow. You know, make sure I know the timings of everything before I make any crazy jumps. And it's a really good thing I got this ice flower, huh? Because I can really just take care of these giant hammer bros easy peasy. Um, Alright, let's move in close. Freeze this fool! And, uh, oh, I guess I can't pick these guys up. That makes sense. They're pretty fat, you know, they probably weigh a bunch. So Mario, he ain't strong enough to pick those up. Um, Alright, I think I'm safe here. Oh, I was actually about to make that jump forward. Thank goodness I didn't, dude. All right, come on, hurry up and retract. I ain't got all day. I mean, I do, I guess, but yeah, I'm trying to get down here because this is where we will find our second star coin. Now, be a little bit careful going through here because, yeah, there is a couple spiky pillars. There's also no floor, so this is a bottomless pit, and um, the star coin is hidden underneath, like, this cloud layer, so use your spin jumps to clear away the clouds. And make sure you know where you're jumping, that way you have a safe pathway to grab this star coin and um, be on your way, pretty much. So, let's get out of here now and uh, pretty much finish up this level. Like, we're almost done. We've only got one more star coin, so I ain't worried, man. Not worried at all. But let's just wait for the timing. There we go. We should be safe now. Okay. I'm always nervous, like, whenever I go through, like, a couple of jumps like that, just because one mistimed jump, uh, and I'm dead, pretty much, so it's very, very sketchy, not gonna lie. Alright, um, I think we're on the ending stretch now, so just be a little bit careful here, since I know there's a few areas where you're gonna want to pause and duck just to avoid getting hit by, uh, these spiked pillars, so... Just hang out here for a second or two. I'm actually gonna wait one more cycle just so I can make sure I have plenty of time to jump through here and make my way to the end of the level. And there's the boss turn. Oh my gosh, you know what I just realized? <laughs> I didn't actually get the last star coin. I literally passed right by it. What was I thinking, dude? All right, we need to go back. We're gonna go back and grab the star coin. We can do it. It's not gonna be that hard. Um, it was actually right before this section. Like, I knew where- I know where it is, too. I just walked right by it and sort of forgot about it. I cannot believe I did that. Not a huge deal, guys. We just have to go back through all these spiky pillars again. And, um, yeah, it's right above here where we got that, uh, ice shroom. So, I don't know how I forgot about that. It's pretty obvious, but... That's my bad, guys. That's like the one and only star coin that I think I've actually forgotten about. Although I didn't really forget about it, like I knew I missed it, so... You know what, everything sort of worked out in the end. Let's just get through these spikes again, and yeah, there we go. Alright, we're good now. We're good. Let's just go and fight the freaking boss. <laughs> oh, that was kind of funny. Hopefully, um, this boss fight goes well. I actually don't remember the gimmick for this fight, so... We're about to find out. Oh, there's breakable bricks. I don't like the look of that. Kamek, what are you doing, you fool? Please don't. Um, alright, what's about to happen here? Oh, it's this fight! I forgot about this fight! Oh, okay. I'm actually... kind of cool with this because I think it's actually really, really easy since... Yeah... 
it, there's not a whole lot going on here. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, this is not good, actually. <laughs> yeah, he can't really attack you with his shell attacks. So as long as you can avoid the magic and uh, his jump down, you're pretty much fine for the most part. There we go. Two hits down. One more to go. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? Oh, he's going to go to that platform again. Wow, he went to the same platform three times in a row. That really made this easy, huh? Well, you know what? I'm glad that is over. So, Ludwig, not exactly the hardest Koopaling at all. Pretty easy, not gonna lie. I remember that being a lot harder for whatever reason, but oh well. Not my problem, man. Not my problem at all. I don't believe there's an airship level for this world, so yeah, see you later, Bowser Jr. Get out of here, man. Holy crap, guys, we finished up World 7. You know what that means. World 8 is next. That is the last, like, final full world, I guess you could say. Because World 9 is sort of just a bonus. But, uh, that's pretty dang cool. I feel like we just blaze through this game, to be totally honest. I guess that's what happens when you do one world of video. Anyways, I think that's where I'm going to end off this video. So if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.